Good afternoon. Uh, today we're talking about Webmaster Tools, a bit of a Webmaster tu uh, Tools tutorial. Uh, it's easy for me to say. Um, so I'm uh, delighted to be joined by Adam Futer, who's an SEO specialist. Uh, so we're going to start off with some of the fairly basic stuff. What is Webmaster Tools, that kind of stuff. And then it's a bit more detailed, some of the errors you might be uh, encountering. Uh, if you do have questions, uh, either watching live or later on when you're watching this on YouTube, do ask in the comments and we will do our best to get to them. Uh, so Adam, have you got your cup of tea? Oh, I haven't got my tea, but I've got a glass of water. So. Oh, good boy. Good boy. On a detox. Excellent. I've got a, I've got a, a proper moustache mug, which is uh, hilarious, I'm sure. Uh, so, so let's dive in, Adam. Um, so let's just start with the basic. What, what is Google Webmaster Tools and why should I care? What does it, what does it do for me? Okay, so Google Webmaster Tools, as it quite right sounds, is a tool given to you by Google. It's an online web-based tool. And the short version of it is it allows you to monitor the health of your website. Now, what I say to all of our um, SEO clients is we wouldn't ever start an SEO project or any project for that matter without Webmaster Tools because there's so much information on there that you're missing out on if you don't have that account. Areas such as uh, crawl errors, the search queries that you have. If your site's been penalized by Google, for example, a lot of the ways you can find this out is through Webmaster Tools. And without this account, you're missing out on so much information you wouldn't get elsewhere. Okay, so so is it kind of, I, I kind of like to think of it as your view into what Google thinks of your website. Is that fair? Yeah. No, yes, yeah, but and it's, it's Google's view into it. You don't get all the information you probably want, but without Webmaster Tools, you're missing out on so much more information. As I said, you just wouldn't get elsewhere. Okay, and we're going to cover a few of those bits in the show. Um, but essentially, I, I mean, from a uh, just from a health, forget rankings and SEO. I mean, just from a from a, the perspective of what the hell your website is doing. There's going to be a lot of clues in there if if you're not making as many sales as you're expecting to be, or whatever it might be. If there are problems with your website, it's going to be in Webmaster Tools, is it? Yes, but as I said, there are other ways to find it out, but the quickest and easiest way is through Webmaster Tools. And we always say to clients, and we do it for our management projects, to check Webmaster Tools weekly, because more often than not, if Google are updating the algorithms, you're going to get new messages in there. They may not be your sort of bad messages, but say you should be checking Webmaster Tools regularly to see if there's anything health-wise on the website which you need to work on that you haven't obviously done previously. Okay. Uh, will it email you stuff? Does it alert you, or is it you have to proactively go and log in and have a look? Like, what does it do? No, if um, if you're um, set up Webmaster Tools through one of your emails, more often than not, you'll get an email through with whatever message Webmaster Tools has given you. But sometimes they don't seem to send every single email. So it's probably best just going in there weekly just to check just in case they, the email didn't get through to you because sometimes they seem to go in the spam folder, which can be a bit annoying. Okay. So top tip number one, set a date in your diary and go and check Webmaster Tools on a Monday morning when you're getting over your weekend, just go and have a look and see if there's any scary stories in Webmaster Tools, I guess. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, um, and Webmaster Tools is free, isn't it? It is, yeah. Um, there's always a free version at the moment. There isn't a paid version. Google, they throw out so many different areas at the moment that they eventually could give you a paid version with more updates than what you have now, but currently it is free to set up, yes. Okay, so it's completely free. Um, so how do, we, how do we set this up? How does someone add this to their website? There's three different ways you can do it. Um, the first is a verification file. Now, this can be a little bit tricky, and I've never actually had to use this way of doing it myself. Now, the easiest two ways of doing it are through Google Analytics or an HTML tag. Uh, the first is obviously with Google Analytics. This is the easiest way to do it. So if you're an admin of your Google Analytics account and you have full access, all you need to do is you need to set up Webmaster Tools, and it will give you a verification. It says verify through analytics. And then all you need to do is if you're an um, admin of of that particular account, click verify, and you'll be straight into Webmaster Tools. And that's the easiest way to do it. The second way is through the HTML tag. And this is what I normally do for our clients if I don't have access to their analytics account. Uh, you'll get given a massive long old tag, which is about 30 to 20 characters long, loads of letters and numbers in that. Doesn't make sense to a lot of people. But what you need to do is put that into the heading of your home page between the heading tags. Once you've done that, saved it onto your website. Go back to Webmaster Tools, click Verify, and you're into the account from there as well. So that that's just verifying, proving that you own the account that you're trying to claim it to is. use Webmaster Tools with. Um, with the with the analytics yes. one, uh, we'd be best to kind of go well. Log into your Google Analytics account uh, that you use. You're the admin of it. Then open a new tab. Go to Google and type Webmaster Tools. You'll find WebmasterTools.Google.com or whatever it is, uh, and then that will say yes. verify the site. So make sure you're logged into the Google with the account that, that you're using for analytics. 
Yeah, spot on. And, and say, if you've never set up Webmaster Tools before, when you click on Webmaster Tools on the first organic link, you'll be taken to a page with no websites on there whatsoever. You, all you need to do is click the uh, big red uh, Add My Website URL button, add in your homepage URL for your website, and then you get taken to the verification screen where you can go through the different ways to verify it, whether it be through analytics or the HTML tag or any other way. Okay, an uh, interesting thing we should point out there, and, and obviously you have a ton of these because you look after a load of sites, but you yes. can have multiple sites linked to one email address. So rather than you can do, logging yeah. out, logging in and everything else in a big mess, if you're looking after multiple websites, uh, some of the clients that we deal with have, uh, you know, a number of different websites selling different products, um, you know, a number of e-commerce stores, rather than having to kind of go, okay, I'll log out, log back in. You literally go Webmaster Tools and it will just give you a list of all the, all the sites you have access to and then you navigate in from there. Yes, but yep. I've got access to about 30 to 40 sites in my Tillerson email. So, yeah, you have to do it with one email, otherwise it gets a little bit too messy up <laughs> doing it any other way. So. Not to mention all the cookie disasters and confusion and stuff, and we've had some of that this afternoon already, so that's always yeah. uh, always a pain. Okay, um, uh, so once we're in Webmaster Tools, uh, you mentioned about kind of site health checks and, and issues that you get. What What sort of issues might we see in Webmaster Tools? The first and the common one which everyone worries about is if you're if you've ever been hit by a Google penalty, um, the the Penguin update is one of the penalties which Google Webmaster Tools will focus on if you ever hit by it. And there's a section of Webmaster Tools on the home screen that just says messages, and these are where all your messages from Webmaster Tools will be. And they there possibly might be one in there if you've been hit by the update which says we've been uh, we've pitched your website up for unnatural backlinks, you violated Google's guidelines, whatever it may be. And that's one of the error messages in there which a lot of people People are worried about and obviously right this side with the penguin update is it can have a, a bad obviously effect on the site and where you're currently ranked so web stores is kind of the only place really you can find out but you can have a look on analytics as well okay um so what does that look like it's a big uh, big flappy penguin kind of laughing at you or is it just a nice neat little message <laughs> does it say this is a penguin update issue or does it does it actually just say you've got unnatural backlinks or whatever what it, that? It doesn't give you any pictures of any penguins or anything like that. It just gives you a That's little... Uh, such a shame. <laughs> it could do. It doesn't at the moment. You, you literally just get a snippet of text saying, we found uh, your website violates Google guidelines. And of course, when you read that, your initial reaction is to click that link and see what it's all about. Then you just get uh, a little message from Webmaster Tools and Google saying, we've pitched your website up for unnatural backlinks. You violated Google's guidelines, whatever it may be. And it gives you a kind of set of instructions on how it recommends that you fix those problems. But that's a completely different kettle of fish altogether. So. Okay, uh, once we finish the show, I'll add uh, a, a card. Um, so it'll probably appear somewhere on the screen and you'll be able to click that. And I think you've you've done a blog post about Panda and Penguin and various others. So I'll put a link in for that yeah. for you anyway. Um, so um, you can go and read a whole bunch of technical stuff about how to, you know, what, that update, what those updates are about and what you can do about them uh, to try and fix those problems. Um, Okay, what other what other issues might we see in there? Um, we talked before about crawl errors. What what's a crawl error, um, and what do I do about those? There are multiple crawl errors you can find. There's a section in Webmaster Tools which literally tells you about crawl errors, and it gives you uh, definitions on mobile, for example, desktop. And the most common ones that I find in there for our clients are any 404 pages which come up. Obviously, 404 um, affect user experience, which has a big effect on uh, SEO nowadays. So um, sometimes you may find 10 to 20 errors, but other times you can find hundreds, you know, thousands of pages, depending on what your site's all about. If you're an e-commerce site, for example, you may find more. Uh, 403 pages as well so only server pages that that'll be in there as well um we would tend to find less of these in the 404 pages but yeah they're the main ones that we find in um the ways you can also check whether any of your pages are being shown to, to the google's the robots uh, dots txt uh, tester in webmaster tools what you can do again there's a section on this you can go into webmaster tools you can put your different urls in there and it tells you anything which is being blocked at google so this is a good tool if you've set up any new pages and you feel that anything's been blocked go to the txt test and it'll give you recommendations of what's being blocked and what you need to do to fix the problem Okay, so that could be I created a new landing page for something on my website and I go to Google the next day and I search for it and it's not there. And I go to Google the next day and I'm like, oh man, why is it not showing? So I can, yeah, go to, I can go to Webmaster Tools, I can paste the URL of that page straight in there and it will mm -hmm. say, well, don't know what you're talking about. It will go, well, we couldn't really do this because. Yeah, it will give you a kind of, yeah, set of instructions of why they can't see what you've put on the page. 
Okay, so that's for the paranoid among us, like me. Uh, you kind of go, well, I've written this thing and I posted it live like a minute ago. Why isn't it on the first page of Google and why isn't it number one? So that's, that would give you some insight into that. Yeah, that's a different thing. Is you have to remember as well that Google may take a little bit of time to index the new pages that you put, like we've just done, for example. It may take them maybe a day or so to, to index the page. If they haven't indexed it, there's something Webmaster Tools called the Fetch tool, which you can basically say to Google, I've put this URL on my page. Please go and fetch it. So that's another way you can try to okay. make them get more enough, you will. Is there some best practice with that? I guess we probably shouldn't kind of abuse that fetch tool too much. You only get, I believe it's about... 500 a week it may have scaled it down they seem to scale that down all the time but there's only so uh, many of those you can do within a week if you do more obviously you can't do more but yeah you don't want to abuse that and just add loads of urls because something you obviously don't want to annoy google with what you're doing there no absolutely um and we talked before about uh you can put your sitemap url into webmaster tools so uh obviously if you've got a website that's built on magento or wordpress or shopify or any of those platforms then the sitemaps tend to be fairly dynamic but you can yeah. specify that url put that in webmaster tools and that will uh, effectively it will just come and crawl that uh that sitemap regularly for you that's another thing you can do with webmaster tools as well isn't it it is, yeah. You can a uh, common one that we put. They don't seem to take the HTML sitemaps pretty well, but the XML sitemap variations you can put into Webmaster Tools, as you mentioned. It obviously crawls the sitemap tower and it tells you how many pages you have in there, how many are being indexed. So if you've got 100 URLs but only 50 are being indexed, then you know obviously you've got a problem within your sitemap which you need to fix. But again, this is another health check where you can check on the health of the sitemap and if there are any errors, you can deal with it from there. Okay, excellent stuff. Excellent. Um, so next thing just to move on to uh, that we asked uh, quite often in the SEO coaching that you do, um, that's uh, what, what's, a, what's a search query? I, I mean, I know what that is from Google's perspective, but what's a search query as, as you might see in Webmaster Tools? Uh, again, there, there's another section where you've got search queries and what it is, it's telling you keywords that users have typed in to find URLs for your website. So, for example, with, with us, for our Tillerson website, you may find uh, queries in there which say AdWords coaching, AdWords training, and it gives you a whole list of queries that people have typed in to find our website. And we always have a look at this with any keyword research as well, because you may find opportunities in there which you didn't think of before. Um, the only issue is with these, these keywords don't tend to have too much traffic, but if they're, if they're good opportunities and you find that you could get, you know, rank four or five to 10 of those keywords quicker and you could a more competitive term then it's a sort of a no-brainer to really target those so that's what gives you all the information of webmaster tools of how many impressions what the click-through rate is and also the average position as well okay so it's similar in some ways to the data we might get in a google adwords campaign about impressions it is um, yes and how many clicks and that kind of stuff um but a little while ago, okay, this is probably getting off two years ago now, we got into this whole kind of hot water with Google, uh, started doing this um, not provided in Google Analytics where you have your organic data, but they're now essentially not telling you what the search queries were that led the person to your website. Hmm. So in years gone by, you'd see, oh, we got organic traffic and you got 300 visits from SEO specialist or SEO Portsmouth or whatever it might be. Uh, and it would tell you in analytics, this is how many clicks you got for that term from organic traffic and this is how many goals reached how many conversions how many phone calls whatever it might be and we don't see that in analytics anymore but some of that is now in webmaster tools or at least the search queries are there and the yeah. impressions are there and you can see the clicks and also the average position as well Okay. You, can, you can see that data and you can link it up to analytics as well. So the originally, when you've got that on Webmaster Tools, there's a well on analytics, you can link it together. So the information that's on Webmaster Tools will get pulled through to analytics and you can check date ranges as well, which makes it even more helpful. Okay, and we've got another video. I'll put a link in. We've got a video. I know, uh, I think Anthony Potts, who's our senior strategist, he did a little video on how to connect the two. So I'll, I'll put a link in for that later as well. Um, does that then mean in analytics, we can see that not provided data? Uh, it, it is difficult. The, I reckon the, the sort of the keyword information it gives you, I don't think it's completely accurate. That's my opinion of it. I think a lot of it is, but since they got rid of that keyword data, it's made a lot of SEO specialists' life a little bit more difficult because you can't tell them that, oh, this keyword, for example, has generated you 100 leads, whatever it may be. But you can. I think Google are giving more and more of that data out. Um, we think that in the future, you may again get more keyword data. You may get it back, but it may be a paid version. Again, we're only sort of guessing here, but it's something that we reckon Google might throw out in the future as well. Okay. 
All right, excellent stuff. Um, I should say, by the way, that that uh, we've got a, a guide that you can opt into, uh, just uh, some of the basic stuff you can do for SEO. Um, and I think that's got some Webmaster Tools stuff in there. So I'll put, I'll put a link up, up on that for you anyway. Um, uh, and I should also say Adam spends quite a lot of his day doing SEO coaching one-to-one. -one. So if you want to learn some of this stuff uh, sort of one-on-one -on -one with Adam and look through your webmaster tools and your analytics and uh, and start getting some more traffic, et cetera, then that's what Adam does apart from managing it for clients as well. Um, just before we move on to our last question, I should tell you that uh, in a couple of weeks I'm – really really chuffed we're going to get nikki creel on the show uh nikki's awesome uh she knows all about twitter and we're going to be talking about a lot of the new funky stuff that's coming through on twitter and there have been a lot of changes in the last three or four months so we're going to be talking about those so make sure you do subscribe to our channel so you don't miss that show and that'll be in two weeks from today um so uh adam just on to our last question then so you mentioned about impressions and click data that kind of stuff yeah. um a lot of people are kind of impression uh, what's one of them so what's what's an impression that's not someone doing donald duck what, what's an impression in uh, in webmaster tools for example if someone's typed in adwords trading for us is, is just an example and they've seen our url 10 to 50, well, 10 times that counts as a press and each time they've seen the URL or the organic link. So if they've seen it 10 times, it's 10 impressions, 20 times, 20 impressions, et cetera, et cetera. And also okay. the clicks are on how many times they've clicked on it. So Yeah, of course. So so the same terminologies you would see in a Google AdWords account. Um, yeah, it's so, very similar. So an impression means that your site listing, your page, has appeared in the organic listings for yes. that search query. What it isn't is how many times that search query has been typed into Google. No, it isn't. Okay, no, so if you're, if you're hovering around page one, page two, uh, you know, for, for certain variations of a, a particular search term, um, then if that is searched on average a thousand times, but you are only on the first page for 500 of those times, then it's going to show 500 impressions. Yeah, and that's exactly. not the total search volume. That's just the number of times that you your site or a page from your site is actually shown. Um, yeah, exactly. And then the clicks, obviously, is how many clicks you've got. Uh, people have clicked yeah. through to the website. So but you also get different data. As I said, you get the uh, the click through rate there, and also the the average position as well of where you're seeing. So there's, there's quite a lot of data, and they just add more and more data for Webmaster Tools sort of monthly as well. So it changes so often. Yeah. Okay. So just just to summarise, then I guess. Um, Absolutely go and use Webmaster Tools. It's completely free. Yeah. You'd be nuts not to set it up. Um, the easiest way to do that is log in with your Google Analytics account uh, into yeah. Analytics, into Google generally, open a new tab, go to Webmaster Tools, and then verify by using Analytics. Yeah, and that takes that. literally seconds. I've done that just recently for somebody, and it, even I can do it, so it's really easy. Um, make sure you check this weekly. Uh, don't rely on email alerts because you may not get them. Um, you may not get them, yeah. Yeah, make sure you check it weekly. Um, check for your crawl errors. Um, so 404 is missing page. Four, what's 403? It was a server error page, and you seem to find less of these than what you do to 404 pages. I checked a client earlier, which is recently just signed up with us, and I found 10 404 pages, which means the page is there, but there's no content. It's just a missing page, whereas the okay. 403 is a server error page. So that, that's, a temporary, that's a temporary error rather than a permanent one, and 404 is permanently yes. off gone. okay it is, yes. um so make sure you check your crawl errors make sure you check those alerts and and look out don't look out for fluffy penguins because you won't see any you will just get a little text no. going you've been naughty don't you just don't do that again um yeah, and then there's ways to, to kind of fix those as well brilliant yes. okay well i'm really looking forward to next time as well but thanks for being on the show adam really appreciate you taking right. some time out from your busy day no uh, and make sure guys you subscribe next for uh, for the next show because um nikki that's going to be a real cracker might be a bit longer than today's one um but yeah make sure you subscribe and join us for that it's going to be great fun thanks adam i'll enjoy my yeah. mustache yeah. cup of tea and uh, <laughs> i'll see you next time see you later. cheers Bye.